This weekend, Kosovo and Serbia's leaders are expected to meet in North Macedonia to discuss on an implementation annex for the basic agreement that is being called the European Proposal. You've said that the two countries shouldn't miss the bus on this upcoming meeting. Why is that so? Because time is not on Kosovo's or Serbia's side. We need uh, to overcome this permanent crisis management and um, the EU 27 countries, the US, uh, we have invested a lot and our leaders, you know, last week, uh, Prime Minister of Italy, President of France and the German Chancellor also uh, published a letter to the two leaders in which they underlined the importance of this agreement. And I'm very happy that on the 27th of February, President Vucic and Prime Minister Kurti uh, in principle uh, agreed uh, to this European proposal which was uh, launched by France and Germany. However, we've seen a, a different set of expectations from Kosovo and Serbia's leaders uh, for the Ohrid meeting. We've seen more skepticism on Serbia's side. How do you comment on that? You know, we also have to overcome this constant, I know what I don't want, you know. We now need to come and I think this is the dynamic uh, which we try to instill in, in the stakeholders. We uh, need to um, it, uh, agree what we can achieve together. And that is, uh, for me, the good thing. You have a basis and now we have an implementation annex. And uh, we have made clear what we expect from Kosovo and also the European um, envoy, Mr. Leitschak, you know, who works hard, who has our full support has made clear yesterday, without ASM, there is no deal. On the other hand, Serbia also has to, um, has to come to terms that Kosovo is a neighbor and has a European future. And for Kosovo, there's a lot to gain. Well, experience from the past has taught us that many uh, agreements reached in Brussels have not been implemented. There have been many follow-up uh, agreements and roadmaps to implement them. How do you think the EU plan is going to be different to that? Because I think the glass is now half full. I mean, you have, uh, I mentioned them before, several leaders. You have uh, uh, total sync between uh, the EU and the US. And you have uh, really, uh, we have made clear that time is of essence. You know, we have a war in Europe and we, we can't uh, tolerate anymore this constant crisis management on car plates, on barric uh, about barricades, elections. And that's why, you know, we need an agreement on the 18th. It's, uh, this is the deal which is on the table and it needs to be implemented. I fully agree with you. A lot of past agreements haven't been implemented. That's why we are so eager that this time it works. And that's why you have the highest political level behind this agreement. Can the parties uh, choose what to implement and what not in this proposal? I mean, of course, in the end, it depends on the stakeholders, but the basis is what has been uh, agreed on on the 27th. And now we come to, more, to the more detailed implementation. Of course, there are sequences. There are still nuances which can be discussed. But the basic annex implementation, which was uh, provided by um, USR Leitschak, that's the basis for the agreement also in Ohrid. And again, I underline for Kosovo it's important that uh, finally, you know, an, an almost 10 year old um, obligation, the Association of Serbian Majority Municipalities, uh, you know, is, is established. Well, you've mentioned the association, which is one of the most discussed topics uh, in this proposal. Both parties have strong stances on this. How do you see this being resolved? I mean, we have made clear to everybody and also to our uh, friends here in Kosovo, the red line is, of course, there's uh, not even remotely a chance that there is a second Respublika Serbska. Any solution has to be in line with the Kosovo constitution. And um, that is, um, you know, and it has to be the basis of the 2013 and 15 uh, agreement, which was ratified by Kosovo. So. Uh, you know, and w what we also see is we have now parallel structures and the situation hasn't become better but worse, you know, uh, Kosovo Serbs have left the institutions. So you have a bad situation and by 
you know, establishing the ASM, we will bring, hopefully, uh, Kosovo Serbs into the co in integrating them in the state. I mean, that's a good development. I see it from this perspective. You've mentioned that there can be sequences uh, to yeah. this. Do you think there is room for renegotiation, for example, uh, for the association? I mean, I can't speak uh, for the stakeholders, but I said, of course, details can need to be discussed. I mean, you know, the, uh, the, the, the different details, uh, but they are all based on what is being, uh, what has been developed by, by Leitschacht. And as I said, Kosovo has to gain a lot, you know, de facto recognition, territorial integrity, uh, recognition of all documents and national symbols, um, the overcoming the past, you know, um, based on European values. I see this is, a, you know, a great step forward. It's not the, f the end, but I think it puts both uh, sides on the road to Europe. And again, overcoming constant crisis management. Uh, and then again, uh, one of the articles of the Re European proposal states that Serbia will not object Kosovo's membership in any yes. international organization. But Serbian President Aleksandr Vucic, however, said that he will never accept Kosovo's membership to the UN. Again, I don't comment on uh, what is not possible. I want to comment what is possible. And when Serbia and the stakeholders, do, uh, let's say, accept a certain paragraph, we will not block membership in international organizations. I'm not aware that Serbia has a veto in the United Nations. What about other international organizations? We can't, we can't um, speak for them. But I think if you have a dynamic where these two uh, countries agree on something, I don't see third parties polluting that. I mean, it's the same, uh, it has been discussed before, you have uh, several non-recognizers in the EU. I, I'm very hopeful, and we are constantly exchanging with them, that a positive outcome on the 18th will also unblock this uh, non-recognition. You know, I'm very hopeful. There's no guarantee, but I don't see any reason why not to recognize anymore if even the two countries have already a, a de facto recognition between each other. Has there been uh, internal discussions of, or has there, ha, has there been a, a tangible shift in these countries' position uh, in case this implementation goes through? I mean, as I said, I, you have to speak to these countries, but I'm 100% I'm hopeful also coming from my own national experience, I grew up in a divided uh, Germany and we never recognized as West Germany, East Germany. But as soon as we had a basic agreement between these two countries, all those countries which we prevented from recognizing East Germany immediately recognized East Germany. That did not change our internal relationship. All of these non-recognizers has always said, if there is a positive dynamic on normalization, we will um, rethink our position. And again, for me, it's more or less, to put it um, colloquially, a slam dunk. You know, if you have an ideal outcome, there will be re non recognizers recognizing Kosovo. I'm quite sure. And that's why it's so important that we have, that we get over the line and don't miss the bus, as I said on the 18th. Um, can we speak specifically for Germany? Has Germany promised Kosovo uh, help in pushing uh, uh, membership in international organization, organizations? Look, we are one of the closest allies of Kosovo. We are invest a lot. I mean, we have also, uh, on the human level, so close relations, you know, almost half a million uh, Kosovo or Kosovo Germans live in Germany. I mean, you know, there's a constant exchange. We are the biggest uh, uh, foreign investor, biggest source of remittances, trade partner. Of course, we speak with uh, with our partners, and that's why also I'm hopeful. And but I can't give a guarantee. You know, every country decides for itself. But first, I mean, we, you know, I'd, uh, it's difficult to uh, answer hypothetical questions. First, we need to get over the line on the 18th, and it demands from both sides uh, the willingness uh, to go the extra mile for Kosovo on ASM, for Serbia to recognize that Kosovo is there and, you know, uh, has a European perspective. 
Uh, we've talked about benefits for both countries. Uh, what will be the possible consequences for them if they're not constructive in these meetings? Again, hypothetical question. But of course it has consequences. I don't see this extra, how should I, explain, uh, how should I phrase it, going the extra mile anymore. I mean, the last month's uh, leaders uh, in Europe have invested a lot. You know, you had meetings and again, take the geopolitical situation. We have a war in the Ukraine. There are so many challenges and that's why the Western Balkans, Balkans belong to Europe. But we really need to stamp out this constant, yeah, crisis management. And it will have consequences. There will be less focus. Uh, on, on, you know, if you can't solve a conflict, uh, maybe uh, it'll be, you know, it will be managed, but there will be, if we don't see the stakeholders going the extra mile, you know, why should our leaders continue to go the extra mile? We have to invest our resources in, you know, I mean, there's a war again. And here uh, we, um, we have now, we have seen there is a solution on the table. And I think both, we expect from both sides that they take it and they really act earnestly on it. If I may insist in this topic, uh, in a prior interview uh, for RFERL, uh, Prime Minister Kurti said that they, there have been talks of possible consequences if uh, the parties are not constructive in the dialogue. Has there been something specific, specific that has been said to Serbia or Kosovo regarding uh, pushing for uh, constructiveness in the dialogue? Uh, look, I mean, the, the, there's a promise of uh, extra, um, let's say, support and investment. You know, if there's no, uh, if there is a failure, you know, there's no extra support. And, you know, and uh, I mean, the, that is already a consequence, you know. Will it be easier to join international organizations? No, it won't. It will become more difficult because how can you expect... Uh, you know, I mean, the road to Europe is via this proposal. And we want uh, both countries to be part of Europe. I mean, the whole Western Balkans belongs to the EU. Most of the countries, some of the countries are already in NATO. Kosovo wants to become part of NATO. In order to become that, you need to convince all NATO members that you are a constructive partner. The proposal, uh, as it it has been published, does not mention a de euro recognition from Serbia. Do you think there's possible normal normalization without uh, recognition, mutual recognition? I mean, everybody has made clear this is an interim step, but a very important one because it sets in, uh, it starts a dynamic which, which, read, uh, which leads to full normalization. I mean, you know, mutual recognition is the end game for us because without mutual recognition, I don't see uh, one of those of one of the two countries in the EU because we will not accept countries which do not mutually recognize nice each other. But for now, this is the best deal you can get, and there's a lot of benefits which I mentioned, and you too. You know, end of international that any that uh, Serbia blocks Kosovo from entering uh, international organizations. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you.